So I finally downloaded Blender 4.2 and one of the first things I decided to test out was the retopology features. Now, some of you that are longtime viewers here might recognize this chap from an older video titled Head Sculpting and Poly Painting, or you might have seen him in my Intro to ZBrush series. Since then, he's been sitting on one of my hard disks collecting dust. I figured it was time to put him to good use, and what better than a facial retopology video? The last time I tried retopology in Blender was in version 2.93, and it really took the cake. It was just no match for things I had used in the past, like Maya's Quad Draw, and it definitely stood no chance against dedicated retopo tools like Topogun. But things have changed since then. Version 3.6 brought us a retopology shading option that finally allowed us to visualize the retopologized mesh. Before that, I was using curves to retopo my meshes whenever I needed to. You might be thinking if you heard that right. Yes, I said curves. If you're curious about that workflow, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video covering just that. However, this method is obsolete with all the changes Blender has received. So upon loading the high poly mesh into version 4.2, I immediately noticed how incredibly fast it's gotten to load in high res meshes. And the retopology option found in the mesh edit mode overlays has really made it easier to see what you're doing. However, the default way of working still requires a wee bit of setup before you can begin. There is finally also a free add-on called Polyquilt that's very intuitive and makes life so much easier for those of us that do retopology on the rare occasion that simply do not want to unnecessarily spend on paid solutions. I will however be working with Blender's default options for the facial retopology part and will retopo the rest of the head including the year using the Polyquilt add-on. For those of you that are just starting out and are new to the concept of free topology, here are some general tips to keep in mind in order to achieve good results. So to begin with, keep the mesh as low in density as possible. It's much easier to tweak and to correct mistakes on a lighter mesh. A high density mesh on the other hand, will increase the amount of time it takes to complete the process and it also increases the complexity of the mesh, which makes it a nightmare to edit. I could have done a much better job at keeping the mesh more lighter in my example. Strive to create quad-based geometry whenever possible. Triangles are fine, but keep them to a minimum. Confine them to areas that undergo little to no deformation. Same thing for engons. By trying to maintain quad-based geometry, we are reducing unpredictable results. Keep your purpose for retopologizing in mind, whether it's better topology for sculpting or to facilitate animation. Make sure to also evenly space out your topology. This is not just to make your topology look nice, but because extremely stretched out polygons will produce bad results when undergoing deformation. Pay attention to poles. The three and five spoke variety are inevitable, but be mindful about their placement. Avoid poles with six or more edges, especially when it comes to organic models. There are always exceptions to the rule. Refer to my video on six spoke poles to know more. When performing loop reductions, make sure to hide them well, as they will result in artifacts. Plan your topology ahead of time to ensure better results. Once you're done, be sure to check that your normals are facing the right direction and tidy up loose geometry, if any. Retopology is one of those skills that require a lot of repetition to get good at. Here are some tips specifically for facial retopology. Pay close attention to the manner in which these loops flow around regions like the eyes, nose, and mouth. These areas are subject to a lot of deformation and hence require special attention. Once you've established the major loops, use the grid fill function to fill in these empty areas between them something I conveniently forgot to do when working on this guy. Use the smooth vertex function that can be found when right-clicking in edit mode. It will beautify the sloppy result from manually pushing and pulling verts. Use the crease edge function to maintain sharpness whenever needed. Now, some of you might be wondering, why not just automate the process? Quadrimesha exists, doesn't it? Why not just remesh the high poly sculpt? 
Short answer is no automatic solution can get you production quality topology. So until then, we are stuck doing this by hand. Same thing goes for UV. Automatic retopology has its place. And if you want to know more about automatic versus manual retopology, I got an entire video covering that. That's it for me. Hope you learned something from this video and enjoy the rest of the process. Oh, and don't forget to tune in for the next part where I tackle the rest of the head using the Polyquilt add-on.
Thanks for watching, I hope you learned a thing or two, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified when the next video goes up.